Urban Family Talk. Good evening, everyone from around the world. You are watching the Exceptional Conservative Show on the Exceptional Conservative Television Network. And we are joined this evening by none other. Well, no, we had him the last time. We didn't want to talk to him no more. Lonnie Poindexter, Christian commentator at The Lion Chasers on Twitter, at The Lion Chasers. What a tremendous pleasure it is to have you on the air with us tonight, sir. Well, Ken, it's always an honor and a pleasure when I can join you on your uh, nightly radio program, man. Thanks for having me on. Thank you so much. Uh, we're, we're television now. We're, we're television. That's right. <laughs> Oops. Oops. <laughs> have it. There you go. He's gone big time on me, folks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, Lonnie, it's, it's always great to have you on. Just a little while ago, the House of Representatives decided that they would condemn all hatred in the House. Uh, it included uh, bigotry and hatred against LGBTQ, uh, African Americans, uh, Asian Americans, uh, and they used the term, and others. I uh, wanted to get your thoughts uh, on the and others part, which could be pedophilia with the LGBTQ crowd. I uh, want to get your thoughts, and also uh, illegal migrants. want to get your thoughts on the condemnation. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head. The and others can be whatever sundry, uh, morbid, or perverse thing that they want to throw in there because you know how the DNC rolls. I just find it interesting that uh, sort of going after who they need to go after, which is the, uh, the congressman. Exactly. Uh, Liz Cheney, uh, Louis Gomer, Paul Gosser, uh, a host of others uh, voted against it. 23 Republicans voted against it. And now the way that's going to be pre presented in narrative tomorrow morning in the mainstream media is that Republicans hate all those groups of people. That's why they voted against that. Uh, but Liz Cheney made it very clear that this, this should have been focused on Ilhan Omar and not all the rest of that stuff. Your thoughts? No, I agree, brother. I mean, they're ignoring me. Um, if I can use the term elephant in the room, uh, how that woman was elected is beyond me, but it really shows how stupid the will the American populace is in uh, communities across America. Um, she is a Jew hater. Yeah. Let me just cut to the chase. I'll say it the way that uh, Pastor Dumasani Washington says it. And, and yet you have Pelosi covering for her than what they're doing with this so called vote today. And I, and I agree with Gomer and the rest that are uh, GOP are hate mongers and they hate people and they're, they're Islamophobic and they're homophobic and, and, um, and every other kind of phobic. Uh, when what they need to be doing is addressing rogue members of their party. They are so far left that. I, I don't even know if they can use the term Democrat in their in their designation. Yeah, yeah. Actually, and I, I spoke about that earlier. Why are we even using the term Democrat anymore? They're not. They're not at all. They are actually socialists. And yes, the, they are. And I, I want to talk with you very quickly because a lot of our own people don't know history. Um, and they don't know that the Jews were in the Holocaust, six million strong uh, dead at the hands of Hitler, but Hitler belonged to a party called the Democrat Socialists. They were fascists, yeah. uh, and they went on with their hatred towards Jews to exterminate six million people. And you have Pastor Dumasani Washington on, and, and they're, hopefully they're getting back from their trip to Israel. Uh, and, and why is it so important for African American Negro colored black pastors to get up off their duffs and go to Jerusalem? They need to go to Jerusalem to see the truth about what's actually happening in Israel. In fact, I was uh, having an in-depth discussion with uh, one of our fellow media personalities last night on the phone, who has a slightly different view than you and I concerning mm. Israel. 
uh, you know, the age old thing that uh, I wouldn't call him a black Hebrew Israelite, but he certainly thinks that the uh, um, Ashkenazi and Khazari Jews that are in Israel, they're not legitimately um, have rights or uh, claim to the Holy Land. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, my brother, have you been to the Holy Land? And I already knew the answer to that. Well, no. I said, well, how do you know? Well, I said, so you're going to tell me because of what you've read and that you'll be telling me about the Balfour Declaration. And he went into the Rothschilds and all like that. I said, so oh, I'm going to present to you <laughs> empirical, empirical, empirical data of a study that was done by a reputable university that shows the direct genetic link between Khazari and Ashkenazi Jews, in other words, white European Jews, genetic link back to ancient Israel. Would that sway you? And then he went back to the Balfour Declaration in the Rothschild. Yeah. <laughs> Understand that if your views put you on the same side of this issue with BDS, Hamas, Hezbollah, Nation of Islam, um, AOC, mm-hmm. Nancy Pelosi, and the rest of these individuals that obviously um, have hate in their um, DNA. Yeah. Um, you got to, and, and maybe, and forgive me if I'm rambling on you. No. Searching for words that, well, I, when I look at this and I say, okay, our sworn enemies see us as uniquely and forever connected together, and that would be Israel and the United States. Mm-hmm. It tells mm-hmm. that there's a historic link and a bond, bond between us. This whole thing about, folks, they weren't converts. I'm talking about walking and talking, Hebrew-speaking Jews and Israelis in the Holy Land of every color in the rainbow, which confirms what Scripture said that the Lord said he would scatter them to the four corners of the earth. Mm-hmm. They even returned them one day, and they are returning to Israel, and they're there, and they're still coming. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, there's a great deal of they say insensitivity um, to women, but the only way that you can be Jewish by descent is by women, not by men. That's the power of woman uh, in the Judaic culture. It's a, simply amazing uh, how the Judaic culture uh, is blighted. So often, they got 10 miles of land uh, near the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, they have 42 uh, OPEC and Middle Eastern countries that would like to push them into the Mediterranean Sea. And God keeps them. Kept them through a seven-day war against all of uh, the Middle East. And they survived. And to this day, they have a dome that protects them. And yet they share space with the Palestinians out of their own. They could have eliminated the Palestinians completely and kept them out of the country. And yet they have a democracy that allows them in and even to vote. Where is this hatred that they have towards the Palestinians, sir? I didn't see it demonstrated there, brother. Um, the PLA will fire rockets across the border right over into Haifa. Uh, right there at the uh, campus of Rambam Hospital, you can see the mortar shells where they dig into the parking lots. And then um, um, the IDF responds, and then the PLA incurs casualties. And guess what? The PLA sends their casualties. They send them across the border <laughs> to Israel. Now they're moderate Muslims, obviously, but there are mo- there are Muslim members of the IDF. Did you, you folks hear what I just said? On Ken's show. <laughs> And I was, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. They're depicted as being the big, bad, ugly Israel who is pushing around the poor little Middle Eastern countries. And you're right, man, 40 some odd countries surrounding a country that's the, what, the size of New Jersey? The size of New Jersey, and they hold their own. What a tremendous country it is. I want to talk with you about Lanny Davis and then one other subject before you have to go. Uh, but uh, Lanny Davis came out uh, today. Uh, to protect Michael Cohen because Michael Cohen declared 55 seconds into his uh, testimony before the House Oversight Committee last week uh, that I have never asked for nor would I accept a pardon from President Trump. 
That's what he said. Uh, this morning, uh, Cohen, uh, Cohen's attorney, Lanny Davis, told a different story. He says, Michael Cohen, a former lawyer for President Trump, directed his attorney last spring to inquire about the possibility of a presidential pardon. I lie to you not, American people. This is what his own attorney says. Now, can we trust Michael Cohen in anything that he has to say about Donald Trump at this point? <laughs> you can trust Michael Cohen about as much as you can trust uh, a hungry pit bull that hasn't seen a steak <laughs> in a week or in a, in a week and he's got a steak at his job that he's going to give it up and give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Cohen is like, when, when are we just going to get tired of the, the, the witch hunts of the left uh, and, and and just say shut this well we can't do that because we have uh, the House of Representatives taken over by socialists I no I, I agree with you brother I mean um, we're not going to see any let down on this I mean Boris and Natasha Gate they finally let go of that um, you know that's what I nicknamed the old Russia bit because yeah. I love Rocky and Bowling yeah, exactly it's a cartoon they're a cartoon so it might as well be Boris and Natasha Gate They'll hold on to this until it, it lets all the air out. How can you trust the guy who was caught lying and is trying to save his own career in? So he has no problem trying to throw the current president under the bus. And oh, by the way, he wanted a particular promotion or assignment when Trump got elected, and he didn't get that assignment. So mm. there's power there, ladies mm. and gentlemen. Wow. What we will do when we don't get a job, and I don't say why Michael Cohen. I, well, I, well, I do understand why people want to know, want to be said to have at least served some time in the White House. I mean, that's money, that's bank, uh, and, and and Cohen didn't get bank on this one. Want to talk with you real quickly about this? We had a conversation after CPAC at dinner, uh, Di, uh, Lonnie and Deborah Blair Frazier and I. Great conversation. And we were talking about adoration. Okay, so yeah. I'm going to get you into a lot of trouble here. And I'm going to get into a lot of trouble here. here you are. Yeah, here we go. That women need to show men adoration. And can you give everybody the subject matter that we would? Because I know already the lines are going to heat up <laughs> about what I just said. But that men deserve adoration. Director. What were we talking about, sir? Director Cards and Letters, Jennifer <laughs> Clinton, care of the Acceptance Conservative Network, <laughs> Washington, D.C., Post Office Box. <laughs> what, we were, what we were talking about is fathers and daughters. Yeah. And the unique bond between fathers and daughters and how all these types of things. And it's lost. And I talked about my daughter, you talked about your daughters, and how they have a unique ability to do just about anything, what not manipulate, between manipulation. And um, cause my own daughter, <laughs> you that I could see it coming a mile away. How was your day, daddy? I'm hugging a kid, that kind of thing. And the way she dealt with me in her femininity, mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. can get just about anything that she wanted out of me. And I think it is a lost art with women. Women's true power is in the, in the femininity that they have given to them from God on high, not in them becoming more like men. That's what we were talking about. Exactly. And, and the whole idea is that that little girl will come downstairs and wrap her arms around you and say, Daddy, I love you. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and on a very hard day, that you have you know e even if she took your legal papers and took her Crayola and drew I love you on your legal paper it's a contract you work it on and she drew I love you on it it's because of what she did in that moment that moment of adoration uh, that a lot of women miss uh, and that it would actually improve relationships with the adoration that is approached towards men. I, I know a lot of women are going to jump on me at this point and say, well, isn't that something men got to do? Yeah, we, we, we got to love you with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. 
but sometimes a little bit of adoration would go a long way. How can people hear what you have to say Monday through Friday, sir? Oh, brother, let me just quickly say that um, men's part in all of us, we're supposed to love our wives as Christ loved the church. And you know what the Christ did for the church? He laid down his life literally for it. Yeah. Um, folks can catch me Monday through Friday uh, from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. on urbanfamilytalk.com. The name of the show is Lion Chasers with Lonnie Poindexter. We talk about the intersection between faith and public policy. And you can also catch us on your radio dial um, in Marcus, where we actually have towers. You can find all that information out at urbanfamilytalk.com. Thank you very much, Lonnie Poindexter, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you, and thank you so much for what you do, not just for uh, the Christian nation, uh, but for the entire world. You are a great man, and I thank you for being my friend. Lonnie Poindexter, Thanks ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will be right back with more of the best in urban conservative talk. Yes, I want to talk with you all about the cashless society and how that is actually a, a date of death and death upon this nation and certainly discrimination against the poor. You do not want to go to a cashless society. We'll